In the last video, we found a reaction of this overhang beam. And as you guys requested, I'm going to show you how the shear diagram looks like. Also, I'm going to give you guys some super useful tips to quickly visualize the shear diagrams in general so that you can solve these kind of problems really fast during your exam. So stay tuned until the end. Oh yeah, everybody now. Hey guys, my name is Kenza and with my online courses, I've helped hundreds of students just like you pass the FE exam. So this is the overhang beam and we need to determine the shear diagram. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to give you guys a hint on how to tackle this problem and then you're going to pause the video, attempt it and then come back and then we'll solve it together. Because remember guys, it's very important that you attempt the problems because that's how you're going to be prepared for your exam. Now what you guys need to remember when you're drawing the shear diagram is that when we have a point load that's going down, this point load is going to create a drop in the shear diagram. Now when we have no loads, that's going to be a constant in the shear diagram. And when we have distributed load, that's going to be linear, okay? Now, why don't you guys give this problem a try? Go ahead and let us know what answer did you get in the comments below, and I will see you in a little bit. If you guys want to see a moment diagram for this beam, go ahead and comment below moment diagram and I'll make a video on that next. Now, what we're going to do here is solve this problem using two methods. The first method, we're gonna actually calculate for the shear and then draw the shear diagram from there. The second method, we're gonna use the concepts that I shared with you guys earlier to determine the shear diagram. Now, it's really important that you guys know both methods for your exam. Before we start solving for the shear diagram, first we need to determine the reaction forces. So BY, we already solved for it in the last video. If you guys haven't watched that video yet, I will leave the link above there and you guys definitely check it out first before you do this problem. Now I just wanna show you guys how I solved for AY. So AY, it's easy because we found BY, all I did is the summation of the forces on the Y equals to zero and I assumed going up to be positive. So then I did AY and then we have plus 13. So both of these are positive because we assumed AY going up. Remember, if we get a positive answer, that means our assumption is correct. But if we get a negative AY, that means our assumption is wrong and that AY should be going down. And then we have plus 13 because from the last video, we found that BY is 13 and going up. And then we're going to have minus the point load, which is 10. It's minus because it's going opposite of our sign convention. And then we're going to have minus the distributed load, which is just going to be 6 kilonewtons per meter, and then times the length of the distributed load, which is 6 meters. And then you're going to equal this equation to 0, and then solve for AY. And if you guys do that, you're going to get 33 kilonewtons, and it's positive, which means our assumption is correct. AY is going up. So the first thing we have here is this 10 kilonewtons. So this is a point load that's going down, which means it's going to create a drop in our shear diagram. So we're going to start here, and then we're going to just go straight down minus 10 kilonewtons. Now, when you guys are doing the shear diagram, try to include the negative. So if you have minus, make sure that you have it there. This becomes really important, especially if you have to also draw the moment diagram. If you don't include the negative, you might forget it and you might have the wrong moment diagram. Okay, just something to keep in mind. Now, from the point load to A, we have no load. And as I mentioned earlier, when we have no load, we're going to have a constant in our shear diagram, which means I'm just going to go straight here all the way to A. Now at A, we have a reaction force. This reaction force is going up. Because remember guys, when we have a force or point load, it's going to create either a jump down or a jump up in our shear diagram. This 10 kilonewtons, because it's going down, it's created a jump down. This here, we, this reaction, it's positive, it's going up. So it's going to create a jump up, but how much up, right? 
Well, let's do this. So V1 is minus 10 and V2 is going to be minus 10 plus 33. This is why it's important to keep the signs, right? So if you have a negative number, have it on your shear diagram so you don't make the mistake. So now we're going to have minus 10 plus 33 and that's going to give us 23. So we're going to go up 23 kilonewtons. So it's going to be something like this. Now V3, it's going to be 23. And then here we have the distributed load. So it's going down. So it's going to be minus six kilonewtons per meter. But what you guys need to keep in mind is that shear, it's a force, right? It has the units of kilonewtons. 23 is in kilonewtons, but six, that's a distributed load. It has the units of kilonewtons per meter. So we have to multiply it by the length, which is six meters. So that way we can have kilonewtons. Okay. So here we're going to have six, which is for the distributed load and then multiply it by six meters. So this is going to be shear three. Now, if you guys plug in these numbers, you're going to get minus 13. Also, as we mentioned earlier, when we have a distributed load in our shear diagram, we're going to have linear. So from A to B, it's going to drop to minus 13, but it's going to go this way. Okay. It's going to be a line, a linear line. So here we're going to have minus 13. Now let's take a look at V4. Now keep in mind guys here that I always add the previous shear, right? And if it's negative, then I keep it negative. And if it's positive, then I'll have it positive. Like for example, shear three, the previous shear was positive 23. That's why I have 23 here. For shear 2, it was minus 10. I kept it minus 10. So keep track of your signs, okay? Now, let's go back to V4. So we're going to have minus 13. That's the previous shear. And then I'm going to add to it the force BY. Now, force BY is going to create a jump up in our shear diagram because it's going up 13 kilonewtons. So now we're going to have minus 13 plus 13, and this is going to be equal to 0. So then I'm just going to go straight up here and then stop right there. Now from B to the end of the beam, we have no load. So shear is just going to be zero. So another thing you guys need to keep in mind is that when you're drawing the shear diagram, you have to start at zero and you got to make sure that you end at zero. So your shear diagram must close. If it doesn't close, that means you did something wrong. Okay, and technically here, I should have done zero and then minus 10, which is equals to minus 10. So always start at zero and always make sure that your shear diagram closes. Now, if we take a look at the multiple choice, the answer is going to be B. Now let's determine the shear diagram using method two. And we're going to use the concepts that I shared with you guys. So let's start at this point. So here we have a force that's going down and this force is going to create a drop in our shear diagram. Now B, C, and D, they all have that drop except A. So A cannot be the correct answer. Now from this point to A, we have no load, so we must have a constant. Now all these have the constant, so we can't really eliminate any multiple choice yet. Now at point A, we have a force that's going up. So this force has to create a jump up in our shear diagram, right? Now C doesn't have that jump up. So now we can eliminate C. Now from A to B, we're going to have a linear. So B has the linear and D has the linear as well, but it doesn't have the jump up due to this reaction B, right? Now B, however, it does have the jump up from this reaction. So D cannot be the answer, and therefore the answer is B. This is how quickly you can determine the shear diagram and make sure that you guys remember the concepts that I shared with you for your exam. Also, if you guys learned a lot from this video, then you're going to love our courses that cover the exact material that you need to pass your FE exam. So check out our courses. The link is in the description below. Now, don't forget guys to like, subscribe, and turn on the notifications so you don't miss any future great problem videos. Now, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great week and I will see you on the next video. A la prochaine. Oh, yeah.